Hello guys, recently on Laravel Daily.com we have re-released an older course about creating Laravel API. It was pretty old for Laravel 7 and we refreshed it for Laravel 10 in a text-based format with two goals. First, update the information and make it fresh, but then also with text-based format it will be easier to upgrade to upcoming Laravel 11 and other future versions. So in this video, I want to read some of the lessons for you. In fact, two parts. The first one, the first part of this video will be for those who are not familiar with creating APIs with Laravel. So the first lessons, how to create and how to start the API. So I will quickly run through those. And then in the second part of this video, I will take a few of the lessons from the end of the course, which is about generating API documentation, which is very important for every API. And I will showcase two tools to do exactly that. And if you want the full course, I will link that in the description below. So without further ado, let's dive in. Imagine we have this setup, a category, eloquent model with this structure, and we need to list all the categories. Create API endpoint for someone to consume from your mobile application or Vue.js client, or maybe someone external, just list the categories of whatever, product categories or project categories or whatever. So we create the route and the controller, or maybe the other way around, first generate the controller and then reference it in the route file. And I immediately advise to have API as a prefix, as a subfolder and namespace. It's a good practice in my opinion. And then in that controller, you just return category all. And that's it, Laravel will take care of everything else for you, transform that into JSON if you don't return the blade view here. And now if we launch slash API slash categories in the browser, we do have those categories. They are of course preceded in the database. I'm skipping some parts of those lessons to make this video short. So this would be the result in the browser, but of course it's not readable easily. So that's where it is advisable to have API clients like Postman or Insomni that would give you the data in much more readable format with indentation and coloring and stuff like that. So that's it. This is how you create the API. You just create the API route, return the data from eloquent query, and it is automatically transformed into JSON. But of course, in real life, there's many more things to learn. So in lesson two, we will create another route, so-called endpoint for a single category to be returned. So now we have a parameter of category ID and have a different method show in the controller. It uses route model binding under the hood in Eloquent. And again, we just return the model. In this case, we return the query result, query builder result. But if we return the model, the same thing. Laravel will automatically transform that into JSON like this with all the fields. But what if you don't want to show all the fields? For example, you don't want to show timestamps or IDs or something like that. Of course, you can change this part to return some array or JSON directly, but typically in Laravel for those things, Laravel API resources are used. Eloquent API resources, they are called. For that, you generate make resource category resource, and then you specify the array to be returned. For example, you want only IDs and names to be returned without timestamps. And then in the controller, instead of returning just category, you return resource and category becomes as a parameter of that. And the result is ID and name and no timestamps. Keep in mind that API resources by default wrap everything in another layer of data, which may be configurable, and you can remove that in the route service provider, but I don't advise that. That data wrapper is considered kind of a good practice in general for APIs, not necessarily within Laravel. And then also kind of the best part of API resources is that they are reusable, so you can do category resource here for a single category, but you can also return category resource collection from category all. And again, the same thing. It would return ID and name without timestamps. Also, you may have a question, but what if you do want to return something in case of one API endpoint, but something else in another endpoint? For example, API categories and list of categories, for example, for some dropdown. 
that description may or may not be useful. So how to perform if statement here? This is the example. So we have two separate routes and we would like to reuse the same API resource, but with a condition. For that in API resource, you may do something like this. This when you check the route and then return the description only if that condition is true. The next lesson is probably the most typical error I see in developers questions is returning HTML instead of JSON. So for example, if you have categories one, we have the data, but if we call that with missing category, insomnia client would show HTML page 404 not found, not JSON error. An HTML page is not consumable by API clients like JavaScript. They wouldn't understand that page. As humans, we understand the web, the visuals, but API parsers are expecting JSON. So the thing is, while testing your APIs from your API client, you need to specifically provide that you expect JSON. A lot of code mechanism in JavaScript and elsewhere are doing that by default. But for those cases like Insomnia, you have to provide a header. So this is how it looks in the Insomnia headers. And then you add accept with the value of application JSON and then the error would be shown this way, which contains all the things to be shown for the client. So message and other parameters. So this is how relatively easy it is to start creating the APIs. But of course, it's more complex with authentication and pagination and stuff like that. And the whole course is about that. But now I want to jump into the second part of this video and talk about documenting the APIs with two different tools. The first one is Scribe. Scribe generates the documentation page like this one from the comments in your files of Laravel. And this is how it works. You install that as a package with dash dash dev because it's needed only locally to generate the HTML file for documentation. And then you run Scribe generate to generate that HTML. And if you don't do anything specifically in your files, you will still get something generated because it searches for API routes. And the result is HTML file generated in the slash docs folder. So if you open that, you already see something. And then you need to go back to your Laravel files and regenerate the docs after the changes. But even if you don't change anything, we do have already endpoints with something that Scribe has automatically discovered. And not only that, if you allow that setting, it will try to actually launch those API endpoints behind the scenes on testing data and will try to provide the example response. Again, this has happened without me changing anything or configuring anything. But then you can go to config scribe and change a lot of things like introduction that would be shown in the page like logo, for example, and then this changes and this changes. And then step by step, you configure the general page, how it looks for the user. And then you can configure each controller, each route like this with adding dot block comment. The first line will become the name of the endpoint and this will be the description. Or you can do the same with PHP attribute syntax and then this changes and that changes kind of making it more readable for human eye. Then you also can group controllers into groups, again with dog block comments. So there are various syntax options. Group also with PHP attributes, and then the result of that is group, like submenu items for categories, and then separately products. So grouping endpoints is possible. Then you can also have query parameters for each route, again with or without PHP attributes, and then it will list those parameters with examples and on the page, then body param for post requests, for example. So this will be also listed here. And there are many more configuration options, which you should read in the scribe documentation. And another kind of the opposite, the alternative example for documentation, but more popular in a broader sense outside of Laravel is open API as a standard. So Scribe generates the documentation kind of in a human friendly way as HTML as a page and Swagger, it was formerly earlier called Swagger, then it was renamed to OpenAI, is a well-known standard how documentation should look like, not necessarily with Laravel. And for that, there's a Laravel package, really old one, 
That's why it's called L5 Swagger because it was created at the time of Laravel 5. So you install the package, you configure it, and as a result, you get a page like this. But then in this case, in case of OpenAI, you need to provide much more info and do much more manual work like this. Again, with dog blocks to generate that page. So in the controller, it would look something like this. So you need to provide the response for success and all potential status code for errors. And then again, there's generate command and you have something like this, a page with categories, with potential responses and with a button to try it out. So yeah, this is kind of an alternative to Scribe. I personally prefer Scribe, but if you want to make it kind of more compatible to outside Laravel community, OpenAI as a standard may be your alternative of choice with again, many more configuration options available. Just read the docs of that specific package and open AI standard in general. So yeah, this is how much I wanted to show you from the newest updated course on Laravel 10 API. We're planning to update it for Laravel 11 as soon as it comes out because there will be a few changes of how API is enabled. So it seems there will be a new artisan command, PHP artisan install API to even enable the API and generate routes API file. And I will talk about that in the future videos. As I said, the link to the course will be in the description below and subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one and shorter tips and see you guys in other videos.